In the last six years alone, the amount of people in the United States who are newly diagnosed with syphilis has risen by 80%. It's like we're living in the dark ages again. And while most people have heard of syphilis, a lot of people don't actually know what the symptoms are. Syphilis is incredibly dangerous. If left untreated, it can cause irreversible damage to organs and even death. And babies can even get syphilis from their mothers while they're in the womb, which can lead to organ damage for babies and also death. So how do we protect ourselves from this potential deadly infection? In this video, we'll talk all about syphilis. We'll talk about how you contract it, how it's treated, what the symptoms are, if any. The good news is that syphilis is curable. However, if you don't get treatment early enough, it can cause damage to your organs that could be potentially irreversible. When I'm testing people for syphilis, I also offer testing for HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. These less common STIs are worth talking about as well so that you know how to protect yourself from them. And also, syphilis can put you at higher risk for developing things like HIV. Who's at risk for contracting these STIs, you ask? Great question, thanks for asking. The answer is anyone who's sexually active. But when I counsel my patients about who should get tested for these STIs, I talk to them about risky sexual partners and risky sexual behaviors. Syphilis, HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C can be contracted through body fluids, blood, and semen. High-risk sexual behaviors such as having sex with multiple partners, changing partners frequently, or paying for sex can all increase your risk of developing these STIs. High-risk sexual partners are sex workers, men who have sex with men, IV drug users, and people who have been in jail. And of course, if you're like me and you have a job where you could get exposed to a lot of blood and body fluids, then you might want to get tested more frequently. I deliver babies for a living. I'm often in the splash Zone. Okay, I promised to tell you about the symptoms of syphilis, so let's talk about those next. Syphilis has many stages, and in the first stage, you're likely to develop painless, round, firm sores. These sores often happen anywhere the disease entered your body, so they can happen on your lips, on your penis, on your vagina, or on your anus. These sores are often hard to notice because they're painless and they are small. They're going to resolve on their own, but when they resolve, that doesn't mean the disease has left your body. Instead, it means that the disease has moved on to the next stage. In the second stage of syphilis, you might notice a rash on the areas where you had the sores, as well as potential open sores. You may also have a rash on the palms of your hands or on the soles of your feet. During this second stage, you may feel very tired. You may have fevers, headaches, weight loss, and you might also have swollen lymph nodes. In the second stage, these symptoms will resolve on their own as well, but it doesn't mean that the disease has left your body. It simply means the disease has gone into the third stage where it just lasts in your body with no symptoms whatsoever, and you don't know that it's there. At any point in time, the third stage could progress to the last stage Stage, which is when syphilis causes organ damage and even death. So how do you keep syphilis from getting to the point where you have such horrible outcomes? You should get tested frequently. And also, if you think you at all have symptoms of syphilis, you should get tested at that point as well. That's the only good thing about syphilis. In the early stages, you're likely going to have symptoms, and so you could know when to go get tested. Getting tested in the early stages means you'll likely catch it before it gets too far along. Testing is simple, it's just a blood test. However, if you have been recently exposed to syphilis, it may not come up positive in a blood test for one to three months. Syphilis is treated with antibiotics and it is super important that you abstain from intercourse while you're being treated and that your partner is treated as well. Being treated for syphilis does cure syphilis. However, it doesn't mean that you can't get reinfected. So if your partner is not treated, then you can get reinfected once again as soon as you get cured. I think that's probably enough about the crazy world of syphilis, don't you? Let's move on to HIV. Luckily, HIV rates in the United States are actually decreasing. We have come a 
a long way in treating HIV and preventing its spread. There are now medications that we have to help prevent people with HIV from passing it along to others, including their partners, and it allows most people living with HIV to live long and healthy lives. There are also medications that exist that can help people who are at high risk for contracting HIV to not contract the virus. Like all the STIs we've talked about in this video, HIV is transmitted through blood and body fluids. It can also be transmitted through breast milk. Unfortunately, HIV is not curable and most people who have HIV have no idea they have HIV. A lot of people don't have symptoms of HIV. If they do have symptoms, they're likely to occur two to four weeks after being exposed to the virus. Like syphilis, people may have some of the same symptoms. They may have fevers, weight loss, muscle aches, swollen lymph nodes. They may also have mouth sores. HIV also doesn't come up positive immediately on a blood test for most people. It's best to wait two to six weeks before you get tested if you think you've had an exposure. If caught early, people living with HIV can receive treatment and go on to live very full lives. However, if it's not caught early, people may progress to AIDS. AIDS leads to a very suppressed immune system and other significant health complications. Unfortunately, people living with AIDS only survive for about three years. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C are the last two STIs we'll discuss. They're very similar, but they have a couple of key differences. Hepatitis B is spread through blood and body fluids, while hepatitis C is only spread through blood. Hepatitis B is not curable, but there is a vaccine available for prevention. Hepatitis C is very common among drug users, and it doesn't have a vaccine available, but for 95% of people who have a hepatitis C, there is actually a cure. Hepatitis B and C are both viruses that affect the liver, and while sometimes people don't have symptoms, if they do have symptoms, they're pretty much the same for both viruses. They can have dark urine, clay-colored stools, joint pain, fever. They might feel very tired, have nausea and vomiting, or stomach pain. And one of the biggest indicators is having yellow eyes. Both hepatitis B and C can cause serious liver damage and even death. They can also cause liver cancer. As both viruses have serious health consequences and hepatitis B is not curable, prevention is key. Using barrier methods such as condoms during sexual activity can be very helpful at preventing these, as well as not sharing needles if you are using IV drugs. As I mentioned before, syphilis can sometimes be transmitted to babies while they're in the womb, and HIV, hepatitis B, and C can sometimes be transmitted during the birth process or during breastfeeding. Because of the serious consequences of all of these STIs, if you've learned nothing else from this video, I hope you've learned to go get tested early and often. Early detection is key for treating and potentially curing most of these STIs. So go forth and be tested. Stay Stay safe and stay healthy, everybody.